do our last review for our Keystone exam and we're finishing up with module two. So let's read problem number nine. In problem number nine, it says the list below describes the results in minutes and seconds of the 800 meter run during a track meet. And then we're given the fastest time, the first quartile, the third quartile, and the slowest time. And it says, which statement about the results of the 800 meter run is most likely true? So let's set up a little picture of what we have here. So it says the fastest time, which is the smallest time, is two minutes. So we're going to go ahead and put our two minutes here. And then the first quartile is 2 minutes and 15 seconds. Now, what do we mean by the first quartile? We mean that's where 25% of the data is. A quarter is 25 cents. So we know that 25% or a quarter of the data lives in between here, or a quarter of the times. So that's what we know so far. Then it says the third quartile is at three minutes and five seconds. So three minutes and five seconds. And that's the third quartile. And then the slowest time is three minutes and 30 seconds. So in between the smallest data value and the first quartile is a quarter. So in between the third quartile, so this is quartile three and this is quartile one, and the largest data value is also a quarter of the data. So in between Q1 and Q3, the two quartiles, the other half of the data lives. So let's look at our answer choices. So it says about half the times are between two minutes and two minutes 40. Well, half of the data is here, so that's not true. About half the times were between two minutes and two minutes, 45 seconds. Well, again, that's not true because half the data lives between the quartiles. About one fourth of the times were between two minutes, 15 seconds and three minutes, 30 seconds. Well, that's not true because we can see it's a half and a quarter. So that's three quarters of the times are there. So I'm thinking it's going to be D and it says about one fourth of the times were between three minutes, five seconds, and three minutes, 30 seconds, so after the third quartile. So that is the correct answer. Question number 10. We have eight members in a running group. Last week, the group ran a mean distance, so we know the mean is 33. and a median of 32 miles. So we know the median is 32 miles. The distances in miles that five of the members ran last week are shown below. So these are five of the members, and remember there are eight members. Then they ask you which list could show the distances in miles that the other three members ran last week. So if we add these first three members to the group, and that could be their, the number of miles that they ran, we have to get a mean of 33 and a median of 32. So to find the mean, we add all of the data values and then we divide by how many there are, which again is eight. So basically we're gonna take 25 plus 44 plus 23, plus 32, plus 26, and then add in these three values, which are 32, 37, and 45, and then we're gonna divide this whole thing by eight. So when I did that, to save us time here, I did find that answer choice A and answer choice D would give us this mean of 33. So I know it's either A or D, but it also has to make this fact true. So what is the median? The mean is the average. The median is the data value in the middle. 
So I'll have to put these three values and these five values together and make a data set, put them in order, and see if my median is 32. If it does, then A is the answer. If not, it's probably D, and I should check that. So let's put the data in order. So the smallest data value, I believe, is 25. I'll leave myself a little space in case it's not, and it's not. It's actually 23. So then we get 25 and then 26. And then it looks like we're getting 32 and 32. So 32 and 32. And then we're getting 37, 44, and 45. 37, 34, or sorry, 44 and 45. And the median is the data value in the middle. And we have eight data, set, uh, data values. So these four are the first half, these four are the second half, so the median is between 32 and 32, making it 32. So we're good. Answer choice A is our answer. Let's move on to number 11. So we have a scatter plot, and it shows the representation for, between the relationship of the high temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, and that's against our x-axis and the attendance at a water park, and that's probably in uh, thousands of people. So it's, it says, based on the line of best fit, which value most likely is the attendance at the water park on the day when the high temperature is 95 degrees? So 95 degrees, This the end of our graph is at 90 degrees, so 90 degrees is gonna take us to about here. So if we extrapolate this graph, that's gonna take us just under the edge of this, which is 400,000 people. So the number that is just under 400,000 people is this B. The rest of them are either too small or too high. So that's our answer. Problem number 12. We are given that a store's grand opening, at a store's grand opening, the first 800 customers to enter the store are gonna receive a coupon for either 10, 20, or 30% off their entire purchase. The coupons are distributed randomly, and the table below shows the number of each type of coupon that will be distributed. So it looks like we have 525 10% off coupons, 225 20% off coupons, and 50 30% off coupons. Which expression shows how to find the probability that the first three customers to enter the store each receives a coupon for 30% off? So I want the first customer to get a 30% off coupon and the second customer to get a 30% coupon and the third customer to get a 30% off coupon. So you hear in my statement the word and. When we think of and in terms of probability, we should be thinking about multiplication. And if we can remember that, that will eliminate answer A and answer B because they're dealing with addition we would see the OR logical operator if we were dealing with addition. This, OR, this, OR, this occurring. So we do know that the answer choice has to be C or D. Here's why this problem can be tricky. The, the events aren't independent. So when the first customer arrives at the store, I have 50 of the 30% off coupons. So 50 of the coupons are 30% out of the 800 coupons. We already decided we're multiplying. And then the next customer comes in the store. When you're calculating the probabilities, you assume that the first person got the 30% off coupon. So there is now 49 30% off coupons, and the number of people has decreased as well. So now there are 799 people 
waiting for their coupons. And then when the next person comes, the same thing occurs. Now we assume we've given out two of the 30% off coupons. So now we have 48 of the 30% off coupons and there are now 798 people in line. So the answer choice should be D. Let's move on to our final problem. We are now going to do a constructive response item. So we have a table and it shows the values of a linear function. So we know that a linear function is in the form y is equal to mx plus b. Actually, in Algebra 1, we should only be dealing with a linear function. I think we do do some things with absolute value functions, but it's not quadratic. So what do we know about linear functions? We know that we have a slope. So the slope of the line can be found using two points. So I'm going to first focus on these two points. That way I can find a numerical value for the slope. So the points are 12, 16, and 20, 22. So we're going to find slope by taking y2 minus y1, or 22 minus 16, and we're going to put that on the top of the fraction, all over 20 minus 12 on the bottom of the fraction. Then I'm going to do some math with my calculator if I need to. So on the top of the fraction, 22 minus 16 is 6, and on the bottom of the fraction, 20 minus 12 is 8. So 6 over 8 reduces down to 3 over 4. So now I know the slope of the line is 3 over 4. Now what you need to do is replace this silly question mark with the variable y, and then write your slope formula again and set it equal to 3 over 4. So our points now are 410 and 9y. So we are going to say y minus 10 all over 9 minus 4 is equal to 3 over 4. And then we're going to solve this. So I'm going to put it over here, y minus 10, because I hate to be cramped, all over 9 minus 4, which is 5, equals 3 over 4. So we have a proportion and we're going to solve it. So we're going to take 4 times the quantity y minus 10, and that's cross multiplying. So we get 4y minus 40 equals 15. Then we're going to solve this two-step equation by adding 40 to both sides. That gives us 4y equals 55. And then we're going to divide both sides by 4. When we do that, we get the y value, which has to equal 55 over 4, which is as a decimal 13.75. So your answer is 13.75. Let's move on to part B. So it says a linear function is graphed below, and you want to find the value, the y value of the function when the x value is negative 5. So you're going to use slope again. So this time the difference is we're not given data, we're actually given a graph. So we need two good points, and we need to know that slope is rise over run. So our rise is up and down here, the vertical, which is 2, and our run is 3. Now, this is a line that's going down. So if I put a little dude on here, the sensation would be sliding down the hill. And therefore, one of these has to be negative, and I'm going to make the rise negative, but it really wouldn't matter. So this means that we have negative 2 over 3 for our slope. So this is our slope. Now, 
what I would do is I would write the equation of the line in order to find my value of y when x equals negative 5. And I'd like to show that so you recall that. So we're going to do y minus a y coordinate. So I'm going to pick this one where the y coordinate is, or the coordinate pair is 4, 6. So y minus the y coordinate, which is 6, is equal to negative 2 thirds times x minus the x coordinate, which is x minus 4. So we get y minus 6 equals negative 2 thirds x plus 8 thirds. Then we're going to add 6 to both sides. We're going to do it in thirds, which is 18 thirds. So we get y is equal to negative 2 thirds x, and then 18 and 8 are 26 thirds. And then all you have to do is plug in your negative 5. So negative 2 thirds times negative 5 plus 26 over 3. So that would be 10 thirds and 26 thirds, which is 36 thirds, which is 12. So our y value is 12. You can also kind of guesstimate it if you would like by extrapolating the line up, because you can see it's going to be over 8. So you might be able to guess and check a little bit as well. Okay, a pretty ordinary question. You're just asked to graph the linear equation. So we start by graphing the y-intercept, which is negative 3. So we put a dot at negative 3. And then we use our slope to find more points. So the slope is negative 2 over 3. And that tells us to go down 2 from the original point and then to the right 3. So that gives us a point here. It's nice to kind of go in the opposite direction as well. So up two and to the right three, which gets us right about here. We could do it again if we want, and that gets us over to here. And then we just draw a line through there. And that's a pretty standard algebra one question. All right, let's get to the last one, which I think is a little evil because I don't see us do really doing this kind of stuff in Algebra 1, but we're going to get through it. So we have a linear function, and the y values are written in forms of k. Yay! So what we're going to do is we're going to use our slope formula again. So we're going to get two expressions for our slope. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these first two first to get an expression. So I take y2, which is k minus 3, minus y1, which is k, and I put that over 2 minus 1. Now, k minus k cancels, and we're getting negative 3 over 2 minus 1, which is 1. So I know the slope is actually negative 3. So I have a value for negative 3, but that's not k. What I can do now is write another express, expression for our slope using these two, and then set it equal to the negative 3. So I'm going to take 2k minus the quantity k minus 3. So when I subtract the quantity k minus 3, I need to make it negative k plus 3. So negative k plus 3 all over 3 minus 2, which is 1. And that's going to be equal to our other slope, which was negative 3. So 2k minus k is k plus 3. Over 1 is just k plus 3, which equals negative 3. So if we subtract 3 from both sides, we get k is equal to negative 6. And that's what they ask us. What's the value of the constant? Negative 6. So that's the end of our review for the Keystone exam. Good luck to all of you who are taking your Keystones.